quite a bit in the shutdown area. The beautiful Chevrolet, however, puts down the quickest run so far. 2.78 seconds. Catching plenty of air. Now, yesterday, during preliminaries, Michael Vodder's Black Stallion took this wild ride. Blowing a tire, tearing body panels off, damaging the suspension and chassis. Vodder's the hometown hero, had a lot of work to do to repair this machine just to get ready for this qualifying round. As you can see, just about everything was dented or broken somewhere. And Vodder's wasn't the least bit happy about it. But overnight, they repaired this machine to this condition. And here's his qualifying effort after that horrific ride. Unbelievable ride! But he breaks the suspension again! Clearing every one of the crush cars, landing as hard as possible, and now breaking the left front part of the differential and pushing the body right into the tire. On the replay, look at the landing. It actually breaks on the second hit. Vodder's looking out to see what broke. Everything on the left side of the chassis is hurt. Chris Chapman is on the floor with Vodder's. Both cars obviously weren't enough for the gentleman sitting to my left. As he went to the line, he just decided he'd clear them all. Mike, what was going on out there? Well, we put all, uh, a lot more horsepower in the uh, vehicle, and uh, we got lighter tires, and the, uh, the horsepower is a great deal more than what we used to run, and uh, I just give it all it had and shifted second. I knew it would, I was going to clear them all, but uh, when, when I landed, I broke a few of my shocks, and they, they, I'm running the airbag for suspension, and when they broke, they punctured the bags, and that's what caused the truck to go over to one side. I told him before we left home, I said, I know something's going to happen. You're not used to the horsepower. You're not used to the new tires. Something's really going to happen. Is your adrenaline pumping right now? Yes, it is. And my heart's going a thousand miles an hour. Is that pretty scary? It wasn't really scary. I just uh, wanted to know what I did to, my, to the truck. Hopefully, Mike will be able to get a fix. I don't know. The last time he was here, he blew a motor up and had it changed. But then for, for the next show, and hopefully he can do something to get this fixed. Black Stallion, is it going to be back anytime soon? Oh, yeah, we're going to come on the circuit strong. we got a lot more horsepower now. We've changed the suspension around. We went to four link, and uh, we're looking to go into a lot uh, higher tech shock, so it'll land a lot better. Mike, good luck. Thank you. He's going to need it. And by the way, he qualified number one at 2.31 seconds. Meanwhile, on the starting line, it'll be the Pony Express 68 Mustang, one of the most unique monsters of all. Anthony Fortier's incredible supercharged Ford door slammer takes a solo run through in qualifying at 3.47 seconds. That will qualify him into the field. So with the Black Stallion leading qualifying, the thrash is on in the pits. But we've got a lot more action coming up. We've got more qualifying and super modified mud racers. Stay with us. Still, the pit thrash continues after that incredible qualifying run by Mike Vodders and the Black Stallion, currently the qualifying leader. On the line right now, the wrecker. Mike Beeler leaves the starting line with his beautiful Chevrolet. Whoa, rather unusual landing there as the truck starts to nosedive. Look at it again. The rear end comes around to the left, and he almost gets caught on the last crush car. That run of 3.50 seconds will qualify him in the field, but that machine has already proven to us on ESPN this year it's a lot stronger than that. But here is the killer in monster truck racing right now on the U.S. Hopper Association Trail. Rob Fuge and First Blood. Big sideways landing, but you want to talk about power. Look at the launch. Wheel standing its way to the crush cars, then getting sideways on a full power ride. The elapsed time, 2.81 seconds. Will surprisingly only put Fuch in the number three spot in this field. The Black Stallion leads, and we still have yet to receive word as to whether or not they'll be able to make it back for the first round of eliminations. But coming up, we've got non-stop action. Don't go away. We're back at Landover Barrel at the Capital Center as we get ready for the first round of actual side-by-side -side eliminations in monster truck competition. And the hot word is that Michael Vodders has repaired the Black Stallion and will be in competition. The first pair of machines on the line, the Pony Express Ford Mustang takes on the incredible grave digger of Les Anderson. And it's not even close. 
two truck lengths difference at the finish line. Actually, it even looked like the green machine got the whole shot as well. And on the replay, you can see that the green 50 Chevrolet from North Carolina led wire to wire. So Anderson advances to round number two. The next pair pulls to the starting line as we continue action here in the first round. It will be Dan Tessori's Star Monster Chevrolet moving up alongside this machine. Norman Grogan and the Kid Stuff entry in the near lane. Staging up, waiting for the green light. They leave the starting line, but again, a blowout this time to Sori bouncing all over the shutdown area with a little bit of smoke up underneath the hood. Takes the victory at the finish line, a solid one and a half truck length margin. The Star Monster, which has proven to be plenty tough on the U.S. Hopper Association Trail this year, advances to the second round of competition. In the meantime, the next pair up could be one of the best of this round. The wrecker of Mike Beeler in the near lane takes on four-time winner this year, Rob Fuchs and the incredible First Blood Ford. And Beeler fails to give the red F-350 the race that the fans were expecting. The Ford nearly clearing all the crush cars, just like we saw the Black Stallion do in qualifying, advances to the semi-final round as well. So, with the bye run being taken by Mike Vonders and the Black Stallion, our semi-finalists include the Gravedigger, the Star Monster, and Rob Fuchs' first blood Ford. But meanwhile, at the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana, we are also getting ready for the first qualifying round in competition at what is usually one of the toughest super-modified mud races in U.S. Hobbit Association racing. 80 foot of 36 inch deep mud with no more than 80 feet of shutdown area. The first machine on the line, the Magic Moments Coupe of John Crutes. In a lap's time competition, the four quickest drivers will return for the final round. 2.46 seconds by Crutes will set the pace. Buddy Coon and the incredible Bounty Hunter, a full heavyweight metal-bodied Chevrolet that weighs in around 3,500 pounds, will be battling the lightweights. The carbureted small block Chevrolet powered machine records an elapsed time of 2.93 seconds. Believe it or not, that'll qualify right now. Larry Jarrett, the defending champion at this event in the far lane with his Oklahoma-powered supercharged Chevrolet-powered entry, moves it up against the fatal attraction entry. Jarrett, big time sideways in the shutdown area. Looking at the replay, you can see both machines had great runs going. 2.03 seconds for Jarrett, 2.23 for the Fatal Attraction Machine. Now, staging up in the near lane, it's the Mole Bad entry, a brand new 1932 Ford for Keith Metcalf and Terry Thurston in the far lane of the junkyard dog. Sideways at the finish line, Metcalf almost upside down in the supercharged Chevrolet Mole Bad. He runs 2.13 seconds. Take a look in slow motion at the finish line, completely sideways. He somehow keeps it upright. An incredible ride. That'll bring up the Maniac, Supercharged, Jeep, CJ, Funny Car of Jerry Rector, and Richard Larson's brand new lowrider, USA One entry, a bizarre chassis design for mud racing. And the USA One machine can barely get off the line with problems. Another sideways ride through the shutdown area for Rector. The new USA One, obviously a disappointment for Larson. The Maniac Jeep at 283, USA One at 309, neither one will get into the quick four. This time around, Dan Hattrick in the bad to the bone entry in the far lane against the delirious machine. Sideways at the finish line and nearly a collision. Bobby Coon in the delirious Bronco had to be wondering what was going on when he saw Hedrick coming for him in the shutdown area. In slow motion, the supercharged Keith Wack Chrysler Hemi nearly T-boning the Bronco in the shutdown. Hendrick's 2.45 second run will not qualify for the quick four right now, but believe it or not, Bobby Coon's delirious Bronco will make it at 226. Defending champion Larry Jarrett leads qualifying at a 203, but we've got more action coming up. Don't go away. We're back at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland, as we get ready for the second round of eliminations here in monster truck competition. We've already seen a wild night for this man. Low qualifier Michael Vodders in the Black Stallion. He's now got to face the gravedigger of Les Anderson. 
He's repaired the damage in the blackboard in the far lane, but apparently not completely. And the Grave Digger losing the driver's side door again will advance to the next round. It looks like more suspension damage for the Maryland-based Black Stallion. Les Anderson leaving the starting line on the replay. Had a beautiful run going. Vonders never made it more than the first 40 feet under power. But still a valiant effort just making it out for competition for the Maryland racer. Next up, it'll be the incredible Star Monster against Rob Fusch and First Blood. The closest race of elimination so far still sees the red Illinois-based Ford take the win by a little less than a half a truck length, setting up a Ford versus Chevrolet finale. But in New Orleans, Louisiana, there is still super modified mud racing action underway. Qualifying continues for the Camel Shootout, the four quickest qualifiers. And right now, a driver has to go quicker than 2.26 seconds to get into the quick four field. One year ago here at the Superdome, Larry D'Antoni took one of the wildest rides in super modified mud racing history in the qualifying round. But here he is one year later in his new addicted to mud entry. Supercharged Chevy power. And D'Antoni has an incredible run going. What a pass. 2.02 seconds. It'll qualify him number two. What a comeback for D'Antoni after last year's horrific incident. He's ready. Now James Tollison and the Sandpacker. Always a killer. One of the true veterans of this class. On the brakes, he must go quicker than 2.23 to qualify. Tolleson supercharged Chevy goes 2.25 and just misses. On the starting line of the far lane, Larry Kolikas' machine aptly named Outrageous and the Master Blaster. Problems in the near lane, Kolikas drives it through, though he'll stop in time with a last time of 2.52 seconds. It won't qualify. And the carbureted Boss 429 powered Ford Master Blaster of Steve Sewell at 5.06 seconds won't have any luck. Here is one of the greats, Ken Crum in the rear engine, wild thing. Unbelievable sideways blast that could have been the number one qualifier. Darren Matthews in the far lane running into problems. The wild thing sideways at the finish line, 1.98 seconds. Ken, you have got to be thrilled with that kind of run. To pull out a one-second effort, the second one ever here, this late in the game is incredible. Yeah, it is. I'm uh, really, really surprised. You knew when you came up that the starting line was extremely slippery. Did you do anything different to try and get this thing down that quick? Well, we let the tire pressure down some, but we don't have the bead locks a lot of guys have, so we couldn't get down too low. Seemed to work out. Still incredible run. The second quickest pass ever at this place, Guy. We'll see you in the shootout. Four quickest super modifieds have qualified for this field, including defending champion Larry Jarrett and a 1.98 second run for number one qualifier Ken Crum. There's no question that since their inception, all forms of motorsports have been dominated by men, and very few women have broken that stranglehold even driving these machines. But within the ranks of the U.S. Hot Rod Association, there is one woman who's broken through the biggest barrier of all. Tina Kelly is the only female event director in all of motorsports, and to handle herself in a world of men is a completely different situation. Now, was there anything you really had to prove to them at the onset? Yeah, number one, that I knew what I was talking about, and number two, that when I say something, I mean it. I do all the teching on the vehicles, make sure they're safety. I take care of all the competition rules. I book all the vehicles. I decide who goes to what show. Um, basically, just make sure that the competition runs as the rule book states. What we have here is a laser light system set up. We use a stage beam laser. This connects with the starting beam laser. And then we have a finish line laser at the end. We put spotlights on the other side of the track, which is what activate, activates the photo cells. When they break this Star, uh, staging beam um, the top of the lot the tree will come on okay that's how they know they're staged so actually they have about 18 inches to jump before they break the starting beam they give me the okay the tree comes down to green he breaks the starting beam that's when his time starts then when he breaks the beam at the end it cuts the computer off and it reads out the time 
Do you feel like a pioneer? Do you feel like a first woman to do something? No, not but, at all. But do you think you've opened the door for other women to do it? Yeah, I think I have, but it just hadn't really... I never really think about the fact that I'm the only woman that does it. I just go out and try to do a good job. Coming up, Gravedigger versus First Blood and the Mud Racing Shootout. Stay with us. You're watching ESP. Here in the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana, we are ready for the Camel Mud Racing Shootout. The first pair in the shootout will pit in the far lane defending champion Larry Jarrett against the comebacking Larry D'Antoni. Back from that crash a year ago in the near lane. A great side-by-side -side battle. The elapsed time for Larry Jarrett in the far lane, 2.30 seconds, but D'Antoni hits a 2.06 second run. Unbelievable job. Said you had problems before the event even started, and you have come back in a big way. Right, we lift the injector hat before the event even started. We were lucky enough to get it off pretty well. It almost seemed like you were as surprised as anybody with the 202 in the first round. Is that what you were ready to come out and put down? Yeah, we was, a, we was looking at at least a 202, was to get us to in Final Four. Um, Garrett's a tough contender. We were lucky to get squeaked by him, but um, I think it was more than luck. The big question is, Ken Crum. You saw him go 198 in the first round. Can he go quicker than the 206 you just ran? I'm sure he can. Do you think this is going to end up with you coming out second best? Oh, uh, it's not over to the fat lady cackle. That's for sure. We'll see you in just a minute. And now D'Antoni has to sit and wait to see if either Mike Pacina or Ken Crum can better that 206 to win this U.S. Harvard Association Championship event. Here's Pacina, the Louisiana-based low-riding Ford-powered alder called the Stud. And he runs into big problems. No way will Pacina threaten the leader. The elapsed time, 2.58 seconds. Watch this thing bury itself in the deep ruts of the finish line. Pacina has got to be bitter about that one. But now, Ken Crum has the last one of the event. He must go quicker than 2.06. On the brakes! Sliding! Even his crewman goes down as Larry D'Antoni in the red fire suit is the first one out to him. Look at the replay. An incredible run. Then no stopping traction at all into a four-ton truck. His crewman goes down, but Crum is okay. In a situation like that, you know it's a disqualification. Yeah, you know it is, but uh, it starts getting away from you like he's trying to make it to the other end. Now, I want every single one of you to listen to this. Even though it was a disqualification, the elapsed time on the run was 1.86 seconds. The quickest run in the history of this track by a tenth, but why couldn't you stop? Well, the concrete's so slick out here, the tires get wet. Uh, you know, normally, as you can see, I came out and didn't get into sand. Just came out of slick concrete. That's all we could do. Hold on. You did hold on. It was a wild ride. Congratulations on the numbers. I know you're disappointed about not getting the win. Larry D'Antoni wins his first ever national championship and a great job. Okay, thanks a lot. So the disqualification, this was the one that won. This incredible event for Larry D'Antoni, the addicted to mud, roadster flies into the record books at 2.06 with a national title. But we still have a championship Ford versus Chevrolet title to decide in Landover, Maryland at the Capitol Center. Rob Fuchs, the nearly unbeaten superstar of the 1991 U.S. Harvard Association Tour, in the far lane with the first blood Ford, moves it up alongside Les Anderson and the North Carolina-based Grave Digger. A spectator dream battle for the championship in Landover. And problems right away for the grave digger. Rob Fuge wins again. On the replay, an incredible flight for Fuge, but you could see problems immediately for the grave digger. It would appear there were drivetrain problems almost from the start. Rob Fuge now seems certain to be the deciding factor in a world championship race in 1991. Who can stop the first blood Ford? 
it seems incredible that this young man can campaign on a national championship level with a truck that he built himself along with the help of friends and no major sponsors. 1991 has just been given this man win after win after win. Rob Fuse, a fantastic win over Grave Digger. Thank you. I, uh, I can't complain on the whole night went. Uh, the truck's been working really well all three uh, three races this year so far. Uh, I hope I can keep it up all year. Are you excited about this? Oh, yeah, I am. I've I've never raced Grave Digger before. It's actually my first time, and it's kind of nice to beat him the first time. So do you have just maybe in the back of your mind just a little bit of disappointment that it wasn't Dennis Anderson behind the wheel? <laughs> well, I guess it really doesn't matter where's the truck, so uh, that was the first time I've ever raced him, and uh, I'm, I'm glad I beat him. Congratulations to you, Rob. Great Thank win. You. Thank you very much. Les, I believe he did draw some first blood from you. <laughs> yeah, I broke axe on the last run that I did, and there wasn't nothing else I could really do. So you went to the line, you spun your wheels. Why? And just to show the crowd I could spin the front wheels, that's all. And the back axle was broken, there wasn't nothing else I could do. Let's talk about Dennis and you. You want to have competition between him, don't you? Uh, yeah, it would be fun. Right. Yeah, it would. It would be fun, definitely. But I think we'd tear both trucks up, because neither one of us would give. Well, Les, maybe we will see a Grave Digger, Grave Digger matchup in the future, but until then, good luck. Okay, thank you. With the winning truck, First Blood, at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland, I'm Chris Chapman. Good night and good trucking. Thanks for being with us. I'm Brett Kepner. See you next time. This has been a GRB Entertainment production in association with ESPN.